In this study, we are going to look at rook end games where both sides have a rook, but one side has a pawn on the seventh rank and their rook is passive or trapped in front of the pawn. If black's king is on any of the red squares when it's white to move, this position is a draw. With black's king on b6, b7, okay, black will simply capture the pawn on the next move. That means it's, it's saying, okay, look at this, this position. If the black king wants to draw the game, this king should be these red squares. Here, here, okay, here, 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 and here. So if the black king is on these squares, then it's a draw end game. Since you can see the white, uh, the black king is not on these red squares. It, it is on f7 square. So it is a winning position for white. How white can win this end game? We are going to talk about. Okay. The next point is saying with. Uh, so you hope you understand in this study we are going to. Look at rook end games where both sides have a rook, but one side has a pawn on the seventh rank. So both sides have rook, but white side has a pawn on the seventh rank, right? And the rook is passive or trap. You know, passive that means uh, it's it's front of the pawn, so it's blocked. The pawn is blocked and it cannot be promoted because the rook is blocking the pawn's way. It is passive because you cannot use right now here. The rook will capture. There's a problem. Rook will capture it. Uh, usually, a good idea is you should keep your rook behind the passed pawn. So, if for for example your white rook is here and the black uh, rook is anywhere, you can easily promote. But right now this rook is in front of the pawn. Are the winning techniques and um, which position is a draw position? We will see and we will learn in this M theory. With black's king on b6 or b7, so for example, if the black king is on b6 or b7, then it's easy draw position because next move rook will capture the pawn and it is draw. With black's king on c6 or c7, black will play king b7 on the next move and be able to either capture the pawn or occupy the promotion square by playing king a8. So if the black king is on c6 or c7 or so you can or a6 can easily move king a b7 and capturing the rook when rook runs away king will capture the pawn. Right next with black's king on a1 a2, if the black black king is on a1, a2, or a6, it's impossible for white to move their rook away from the promotion square with tempo, as no checks are available. With either white either has to move their rook and lose the pawn, or move their king. Right, the white king has now now here. Now here to hide, so black can just check with check white forever. If the white key, black king is here, here or here, then white rook cannot give check. Okay, and it's a draw situation. But if the black king is here or here or any square, then white can easily win by giving check and promoting the pawn. So we will. We will uh, learn the description um, in in a few more minutes. So let's start doing. Let's begin this and understand what is the best move here for. So the best move here for white is you can see since the black king is not is not on one of the red squares. The black king is not one of the red squares. We know this is a win for white. Let's win this game by playing the only winning move. So here, the winning move is rook 
H8. Why we should play Rook H8? Because here we are going to put this pawn. We are threatening to promote this pawn queen. And if black captures the pawn, then we know skewer. We can attack the king and there's a rook behind. So the best move for white is, look at this position again. The best move here for white is, white should play rook h8. And now if black takes the pawn, we have this check. And if black is attacking the king, you can start moving your king to protect this pawn. Okay, we move towards the promotion square. We move our king here and we move our king here. And the same thing is happening, you know, if it takes without giving check, we will do this check. And if it is giving check, we can start moving our king. Would you play in this position? So we will go here. And what would you play in this position? Now one, what is the best move here for white? Ayan, can you tell me here? The best move for white? The king protects uh, pawn. Yes. We should save the pawn and we are going to promote this pawn in next move. Okay. And you know, there are no further checks. Black cannot give you check. Okay. We are now threatening a8 queen. So black has to give up their rope. What can black do now? If black captured, we can capture it. And you know one rook checkmate. Do you know one rook checkmate? No, sir. Yes, sir. I don't. You don't I know forgot. one rook checkmate? Okay. Okay. I will teach you in just a few, few words. You wait. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, for example, we are black here. Right. We are black here. And as you know the theory, how to draw this end game. The theory is black should, if black wants to hold this position draw, if black want to draw this game, then he must keep the king on this, on these squares. Here, this, 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 a6, b6, c6, a2, or a1. Okay. So it is black's turn to draw this position as black. We keep our king on g7, h7, okay, and we keep our rook on the promotion file. Don't remove your rook from this file because if you go anywhere, this will rook go here. And if you go to go back to this square again to stop the pawn, but you cannot stop the pawn because it's becoming. Don't uh, uh, move away your rook from this A file. Okay. Just keep moving your king here. Now next, what can white player do? As you know, if rook goes anywhere, we can capture the pawn. And if king goes here, we can keep moving our king here. Just move your king here. Move your king here. Move your king here. Okay. And when King is attacking the rook here. Don't move king because your rook is under attack. Okay, our rook is threatened. So we move it away while keeping it on the promotion file. We should not go this side as you know because rook will uh, uh, come away here and next move promoted. So don't, don't move this rook any of these squares. Keep it, take distance from the white king so that he cannot attack you. And when it's coming closer, uh, we have time. We can just do this waiting move. When it is attacking, you just take away uh, your rook from the king. Because our rook is threatened. So we move it away while keeping it on the promotion file. We move here. And now when the king is protecting this pawn, remember this disturbing text can allow you to draw this end game. White. Uh, is now going to remove the rook from this a its promotional square and promoting queen but we should not move king right now otherwise we will lose so in end game you know your one wrong move nullifies 40 good moves what is the best move here for black as it's showing the arrow here to make you easily understand what is the best move here for black Black should just give this check, start giving check, 
and you can move back your rook to this square. And now you have time, you can just keep getting moves. Just go there here. You just, uh, when it's attacking, you just go here. And the same drama will be going, will go on. Again, I'm going to show you. This we will play, this we will play. This we will play. This we will play here. This we will play here. And when the king is attacking, you keep distance from the king. Just keep moving your king here. Keep moving your king here. You can take away your rook from the king. And you can start giving him check. And it is coming here. You can move your rook here. Now you can move your king here. Keep your king here. Hey. Now we can distance. And it's a draw in game. White has to accept that there's no improvement. Okay. White has to accept the draw. Um, this time, what do you think? White has an extra pawn on g3. Okay. Okay. In this situation, as we have uh, seen, oh no, this situation, as we have seen, it's a draw in game. White has only one pawn. Okay. As we can see here, this is a draw position for black. But what if white has, white has an extra pawn? Does it change something? I think this pawn doesn't make any difference. It's still a draw end game. Okay, an extra pawn on g3 has been introduced. What difference does it make? Well, if we push it to g6, it takes away the h7 square from black's game. What do you think? Will it be a winning position for white? Okay, let's see. It should move this pawn ahead. Okay. It should move this pawn ahead. Move this pawn ahead. Okay, now black king cannot move here because this pawn, uh, this pawn has control over h7. And if black king captures the pawn, then we have this check. King will move away from the square and then we will promote and win. But, you know, what can black do to draw this endgame? Black can no longer, as you can see, black can no longer shuffle their king because h7 is unavailable. But black's king can still occupy g7 and black can still do nothing by moving here. Rook, back and fourth on the promotion file. Note that king cross g6 would be a a losing blunder for black due to g8 check yes so it doesn't make have, any sense to do yes when we when black takes the pawn then we have this check after king here for example we can promote queen and if rook captures the queen we can capture the rook and you know one rook checkmate hope you get it now one yes sir right so it will tell the win for white yeah, it will win for white because if king takes the pawn, it will be win for white. But you know what can black do this for uh, do in this position to draw the end, draw this game? H six. Listen, black can just give a waiting move here, and now you can still not move this pawn here. You cannot move room remove your rook from here because it will capture it. You if you go here, if you are getting your king closer this way. There's no difference you can make. Go like this. As you know, your king is exposed and black will start threatening your king, start giving you disturbing checks and you have no hide. Okay. You have no hide. Uh, uh, you, cannot, you cannot get rid of these checks. Black will keep continuing check check and your king is you know, not able to up your opponent check. Go here, we'll just go here and here. All right. So it will still a drawing. Yes. Now let's understand if you have a F file pawn. Remember this okay. three, an extra an extra G pawn like here. Sir, how many stories are there in this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine theories are there. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so as you know, an extra G pawn 
does not help white, but an extra B, C, e, D, E, or F pawn does win for white. Why? Because we can now force black's king away from g7 and h7. What can we do here? We can just start moving this pawn. And we can just start moving this pawn. And now we can give check. If black rook captures the pawn, then we have time to remove the rook from here and promote the queen. Okay. And if, what can, uh, what can black do here? King h7. King h7 loses to f7 followed by f8 queen. Other king ya jata hai h7 pe to pawn f7 or fir f8 pe queen man jayega, right? King cross f6 loses. King cross f6 loses due to rook f8 check followed by pawn a8 queen. Rook cross f6 loses. If rook captured pawn loses followed by due to rook b8 followed by a8 queen. What happens after king f7? What happens if king goes to here? Okay, as you know, in the, uh, in, in the first example we have seen initially that white can play here rook h8 and white is going to promote queen. Okay, note that king cross f6 loses to the skewer rook h6 check. And if you know, as king, if king captures the pawn, we can play rook h6 check and capturing the rook. What can black do if black captures the pawn? We have this check and we can now capture this rook. We have one rook and it's winning position for us. Look at this again. We know that an extra B, C, D, E, F. Okay, pawn, win for white, prove it. So we are white here, what can we do? Just move our king forward. We can start moving our pawn, we can move our king here, move our king here, we can attack the rook and now we can remove the rook from, we can uh, just go here at safe place. Now black cannot give check, we have promotion and we have queen, rook, queen, pawn also. How can we win? Okay, we can just win by giving this check. We can, we can, we can attack this king from the rook. We can attack this way. All right, now what can we do? This check. This check. This check. And it's one move check. We can capture. Now, what can we do here? As you know, we have H file pawn and F file pawn. Okay. The F file pawn, if you have, then only you can win this end game. So it's time to sacrifice the H file pawn. When you push this pawn, and if black capture, you can start moving this here. And you, as you know the theory, what we need to do, you can just go here. Uh, we can, we can, we can capture it also. It's time to, time to catch the rook. We can give check. We can now play rook h8. Go here. Here. And we can promote now queen. Giving check, you can catch the rook so that he cannot give check. Just capture it. And you have queen and rook. Um, here I'm going to sacrifice my queen and show you how we can checkmate with one rook. Okay. Purposely I sacrificed my queen because I want I want to teach you one rook checkmate. See how we checkmate. If you have one rook. To checkmate the opponent king, you must need to uh, block the king with the last file or rank of the board. Do that, we can cut off the space. 
Okay, now it's time to move our king here. Move our king here. We can cut off this king file. This king is not allowed to go here, here, and here. Okay, should be in the edge file only. Now it's time to move your king. Move your king. Move king here also. Okay, and just give a waiting move because if this king is ahead of your king, you keep your rook behind it. Keep it here. Because next move after king h6, rook h1 checkmate was coming. And after king h8, we can play king f7. It's one move checkmate. Now, one, can you tell me how can white checkmate in one move? White to play one move checkmate. So, I have um, one move checkmate. Right Option card. Checkmate if uh, it goes to g7. Or H1. Two options here. Rook G7 checkmate or Rook H1 checkmate. Which option is correct? Uh, so the H1. Ayan? Sir H7. No. Rook at G7 or Rook H7. Listen. Rook G7 if you play, G7. you can still move here. Here. Yes, sir. That's what I'm saying. H1. Then if it goes anywhere, our king. Mm -hmm. That's why it's a checkmate. It can't move anywhere then. Okay. Should we go here? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's perfect. See, sir? That's perfect. Okay. Next here we have this. We attempt to force an F pawn, which we know would be winning for us. Okay. It is white to play. What should white do here? In this game, white forced an F pawn. White forced an F pawn and won the game. So what should white play? White can just go here. And if pawn capture pawn, we can capture it this way. Now we can go here because rook if rook a4 was played in the game, but f4 would still have saved the draw for black as white would no longer be able to win black's f pawn why because with the black pawn on f4 white can no longer zugzwang black's rook away from protecting the pawn which is what happens later in the game continuation what is the best move here for white what can move the king here and king f6 was another missed opportunity for black white played here f4 and white played here, pawn e7, and king moved here, here, white king is coming to catch the rook, and white can go this way, coming here, here, now it's coming to attack the pawn, and if black rook attacks the king, it can go here. Here, white can put black in Zugzwang situation. How can white put black king in Zugzwang situation? White king can go here. And as you know, if king h8, black does, rook h8 checkmate is coming. If black is giving check, we can capture this pawn now. So what can what can black do? King h6 is the only legal move and it loses to rook h8. This means black has has to move with their rook away from protecting the f5 pawn or away from protecting the promotion file. If it goes anywhere, we can remove it and promoting. If it goes here, we can capture it. And now we have f5 pawn. We can just go here. We can come here to attack the rook. We have this move. Can attack the rook check and it you know as previously we have seen what would you play in this situation in this game white did not force an e or f pawn but rather sacrifice the e7 pawn to trade rooks into a winning four versus four pawn in game White has four, black has four pawns. This is useful concept to remember. 
what would you play white can play this move here here you can go here here it's going and if black captures the pawn white will do the same as you know now white is going here closer to the rook here attacking the rook removing here and white sacrifice this pawn because this check white can play and after that if black goes to f7 white can respond king d6 and black is in good swang king at six white can attack the pawn and here white can capture it white can move the king here this pawn and it's winning situation for both okay what do you would you play in this position due to the pawn on g7 white is unable to sacrifice the pawn the a7 pawn in order to trade rooks white cannot force the trade rooks but has to force an e or f pawn so white played here g3 first to that white played this white played here pawn f4 captures pawn king f1 white played here king f2 white played here king e2 white played here king d2 because white is coming to catch the rook white played here this move white played here this move to attack the pawn white played here this move white played here waiting move here and now black is in zugzwang black does not want to move your rook away from the promotion square okay nor from protecting the e5 pawn king h6 would lose to rook h8 what black played black played this move white captured this and it's getting position for white white played this move you fight dog the check played this move and it's you know winning position for white and due to the e pawn we win as have seen before next it's coming this check it goes here it's winning position for y 